Hi, I'm Mara Saxer. I'm the Preservation Specialist at Historic Santa Fe Foundation and welcome to El Zaguan. We're out front here uh, in front of the building on Canyon Road and we've been doing a lot of projects here on the building even though we've been shut down. Like here we've been working on all the windows and restoring those. They're all cleaned up with fresh paint and glazing and they all work the good as old and that's been all the way down the building. And then the entry has been a big project. This whole wall, this whole entry has been a bit of a project for a number of years, maybe as long as the wall has existed since the 1920s, um, as far as I can tell from old photos. So we uh, have changed our plan here. We're gonna go fully traditional. This is an uh, adobe mud plaster finish and we're gonna keep it that way, which is the way that the, all buildings in Santa Fe would have been uh, until really the 20th century. That's going to be a great educational opportunity and a great project every year for people in the community to come and help us remud this. Kids can come, everyone's going to be welcome. We're open by appointment, so if you do want to come and see us, please get in touch. And when you do come, please wear a mask, which I'm going to do right now. We're going to go in and see everyone else. This is certainly different, isn't it? It is indeed. On my right is Melanie McWhorter. She is our development assistant at the Historic Santa Fe Foundation. And on my left, Ken Stilwell, the chair of the board of the foundation. Normally, this annual meeting would be sometime in June, towards the end of June, outside in the garden and we would review what we had done the prior year, where we thought we were going in the current year. Uh, there would be a reception, there would be a lecture, and obviously things have changed. So in June of 2019, Ken Stilwell replaced Mac Watson after Mac's years of dedication to the Historic Santa Fe Foundation as chair of the board. And 2019 was an extremely successful year for us. And as 2020 began, the pattern was holding through through the first two months. And then all of a sudden, silence. So Ken, you could not have had two totally different six months if you could have tried. So I'm wondering what your reflections are on the State of the Union at the Foundation over the past 15 months. What continues to amaze me is the amount of work we've been able to accomplish, especially in projects like the Old Santa Fe Today republication and the El Zaguan Master Plan implementation. Even though we have the gates closed, that we are still accomplishing so much with your donations to our organization. I thank you so much for that. Buenos dias y bienvenido al Jardín de El Zaguan. I'm Ken Stowell, the chairman of the board, and I want to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. As stakeholders in the foundation, your investment is important to us. La cultura patrimonial es muy importante a la fundación. Preservación, protección y promoción de los edificios viejos en Santa Fe es imprescindible para nosotros. Yes, the foundation had to change. The board had to make serious decisions about the financial future of the organization and whether or not we could continue in a viable way. Yes, over three years, we sold six properties. We did manage to keep holding on to El Zaguan, where I'm seated now, as our headquarters. This, all of the property sales have had no effect on the mission of the organization. Today, I am proud to give you a foundation which is healthy, 
financially stable, and viable for the long-term future. As Eva Perón sings in Evita, the musical, I had to let it happen. I had to change. Couldn't stay all my life down at heel, looking out of the window, staying out of the sun. So I chose freedom. So the board has done excellent planning and excellent work. We've had a bit of luck. And what we're seeing is this foundation continuing forward with its programs, even though the front gate isn't open. Um, I think in March or April, I asked the staff and the board, how do we continue as much as business as usual, even though it's really an unusual time? And Melanie, you might tell us a bit about the day-to-day. -day. Sitting in at a lot of the board meetings, I was incredibly impressed at the process and the decision-making uh, for the foundation, with the foundation's future and success, financial success, in mind with every decision that was made. So I think at this time, now that we're kind of confronting some issues, I think that the, the board and, the, and some of the staff made some really wonderful decisions for the future of this organization during that time in selling properties. Hi, I'm Melanie McWhorter. I'm the Development Coordinator here at Historic Santa Fe Foundation. Since March of this year, we've still continued to have exhibitions in the Sala here at El Zaguan. We started with Paul Baxendale in March. He's one of our residents who lives in the compound here. And then in April and May, we hosted Tom Leach and Patricia Muzak, who produced original works based on the words of Shakespeare. And then in June and July, we had a former resident, Anna Booth, who showed some of her paintings. And in August, we had artist in residence Celia Owens, who lives in the compound. Finally, in September, we have Sarah Stark, her son Jack, and her daughter Liza. We are open by appointment, so if you'd like to come by and visit us, please send us an email or give us a call, and we're happy to show the exhibitions to you. We also have many of the exhibitions online, too, with absolutely complete shows on, on display online. We've also migrated our, our former e-zine that we used to put out every month to a blog format. It's now called 545. Recently we've published a few book reviews by our executive director, Pete Warzel. We've also put up a piece by Nicholas Wirth on his grandfather, the architect John Gaumim. And we also have done another piece by the um, George O'Keefe Museum on the renaming of the Ortero Berger House that's on our Register of Properties where they're preservation. You can go to our website, historicsantafe.org, and find 545 and read a lot of the articles and book reviews that we have online. We're also continuing our Salon El Zaguan series, mostly virtually, of course, but we do have a uh, a version of the Cormac O'Malley talk that took place here at the Sala with, um, that is about his father, Ernie O'Malley, and his relationship to Dorothy Stewart. We also have Dr. Fran Levine's talk online that was a partnership with School for Advanced Research on Women of the Santa Fe Trail. And we also have in the works two videos by our videographer, Kyle Meyer um, on the exhibition in the Sala of Tom Leach and Patricia Muzak and also a tour of Asequia de la Mariah with BC Rambo. So please follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter so that you can keep up to date with what we're doing. Of course, our events for 2020 have been canceled, including a um, tour of the Glorieta Battlefield and also our tour relating to Route 66 in New Mexico. We hope to revisit some of these and possibly some other exciting events for 2020. So we look forward to exciting announcements when we can do things around town again. We miss you guys a lot. We hope to start to do it soon. In the meantime, we are offering a lot of the programming and education, uh, education online. We're continuing our partnership with Nuevo Mexico Profundo and focusing on historic churches in New Mexico. And we are member-based. As a member, you would have received in the mail our recent spring-summer uh, newsletter.
And in that is uh, an article by Mara Saxer, our preservation specialist, about our very important easement program here at the Foundation. So we encourage you to take a look at that, and if you feel so inclined, we'd greatly appreciate any donations through the envelope that's included in the newsletter or through historicsantafe.org. So you're welcome to send me an email or give me a call, and look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. I'm Pete Warzel, the Executive Director of the Historic Santa Fe Foundation, and we are standing in the entry courtyard into El Zaguan, the other side of the wall and the gate that uh, Mara gave you a tour and recap of the remudding. So looking into the future and into 2021, I believe that the foundation is in an excellent position to fulfill its mission. We, staff, and, and the board continue to manage the financial process on a monthly basis. Effectively, after the uh, shutdown really became apparent, we began to make projections three months into the future and having the board approve those projections at every monthly board meeting. That gives us the ability to manage the finances and to provide transparency to the staff and to the board ongoing. Um, because of that, because of the grants and because of the SBA loan we acquired, the payroll protection loan, we've been able to maintain all staff and to implement the programs this year and to expand them into next year. I think the board, I think the board committees has done extraordinary and extensive work in managing this process and everyone involved has been committed to keeping this foundation sound and moving forward. And that includes you, our members and our friends, and we appreciate it extremely. This has been a really interesting approach to our annual meeting. I've enjoyed this. <laughs> Normally, at uh, our annual meeting, annual garden party in June, we have a guest speaker. And today, the speaker, the lecture, is actually a tour of the garden. Since you are missing it uh, and being in it with the gate closed during this summer at HSFF. The master gardeners of uh, Santa Fe took on our garden I had probably seven or eight years ago. Lissa Johnson from the Santa Fe Master Gardeners will give you a tour and a bit of the history and wonderful of the wonderful place that's thriving behind the wall and fence this year. So enjoy the tour, enjoy the garden, if only virtually and all of our thanks for joining us in a very different annual meeting. Thanks to Thank you, you all. Thank you. Thanks. We look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Soon. I'm Melissa Johnson with the Santa Fe Extension Master Gardeners, and I'm really happy to be joining you today to talk a little bit about the history of the El Zaguan Garden and also how the Master Gardeners became involved with the garden and then we'll talk about some signature plants that the garden is known for. So the first evidence we have in writing about what was here in the garden, uh, that there actually was a flower garden here, starts in the 1850s when James L. Johnson and his wife Maria Jesusita purchased the property and uh, they lived here, their family lived here for the next 70 years and as many people coming here from the East and the Midwest, they brought with them the plants they were familiar with, such as the horse chestnut that's here, peonies and roses, and a few other plants. 
And so after the Johnsons left the property, it was purchased by um, Margreta Dietrich, and she owned the property until about 1960 or 1961. And, and then it was turned into a trust uh, to preserve the garden and the property as it was. And then in 1979, the historic Santa Fe Foundation took it over and they own it now, uh, for which we're grateful. So uh, when we were invited in 2012 to take it over, we jumped at the chance uh, as master gardeners. Um, the mission of the foundation really blended well with the mission of the master gardeners, which is an educational mission. And so this was a wonderful opportunity for us to learn, uh, to work in a historic garden. And it's really been an honor and a pleasure to work here and to answer questions about what's growing here and to also talk with people about the balance that we do with uh, supporting an historic garden where there are older plants here and then also being conscious of the changing climate and the need to be water wise and to consider planting some things that uh, may not normally be part of a historic garden, but uh, considering the changing climate, we need to start including in this garden that are still beautiful. We have 10 or 11 what we call signature plants. These are plants that the garden is known for. And the first one is an anchor plant in the garden, the corner of the garden. It's uh, tamarisk or salt cedar. And we think these were brought here originally by the Spanish. Uh, they're not planted anymore because they're water hogs. And when we saw this plant, this tree, we of course wanted to take it out the first thing. And then we realized, no, it has huge historic value. It's probably one of the oldest and largest in the state. And because of its age, it doesn't use that much water anymore. And it can be very beautiful when it blooms in the spring and early summer. And then some other plants are the honeysuckle shrubs, and again, these are found in historic gardens here in Santa Fe. They're very hard to find now. Most of the honeysuckles are vines that you can put in your gardens, but these are really beautiful. They bloom in the spring with pink and mauve flowers, and then as you can see, they have red berries in the late summer and early fall for the birds. And then over here we have uh, Mahonia, which is a rare variety of barberry and it blooms with yellow and red flowers in the spring, which are New Mexico colors. And then uh, again in late summer and fall, it has red, orange berries that are really pretty and attractive to the birds. And uh, on the other side of the garden behind me is a Colquitzia or beauty bush that we think was planted by Margreta Dietrich and the second major owner. And it was really struggling when we came into the garden and we even thought of taking that down because it looked so poor. But after lots of watering, fertilizing and TLC, it's really cut back and it blooms beautifully in the spring with pink flowers. And it has a naturally peeling bark, so it has a lot of winter interest as well. And then of course there are peonies in the garden, some of which may be up to 100 years old. And again, these were really struggling when we arrived. To work in the garden, uh, but they really come back and they're flourishing and they bloom beautifully in the springtime. And uh, of course there are roses. And then uh, last but not least is the horse chestnut, the one remaining tree of the two that were planted probably in the 1880s by the Johnsons. And this blooms really beautifully. It has white blossoms in the springtime in April or May. And of course, it is a tree from the Midwest and East and has large leaves with a high respiration rate. So it's not really happy in this climate, but uh, we're just grateful it's still here and gracing us with its presence and we'll appreciate it for long, as long as it remains with us. <laughs> it's been a real privilege to continue working here in the garden, in this historic garden that plays such a prominent role in Santa Fe and here on Canyon Road. The, you can go online and it's uh, Santa Fe Extension Master Gardeners, so it's sfemg.org uh, and uh, there is an ask, ask a Master Gardener activity and you, if you have questions about gardening, you can just write in your question online and you'll get an answer very promptly, so it's a great service.